Welcome to this video on theoretically deriving a function of current versus time for a discharging RC circuit, another mouthful, and an extension of what we've been talking about in the past two videos. So I suggest you go back and check those out just so you have a little bit of direction of where we are going. The main objective of this video is going to pick up where we left off, which was we found a function for the discharging a charge on the plates versus time and now we're going to be looking at how to get the current versus time for the discharging RC circuit. Then in the next video we're going to tackle the charging conditions Q and I. Once we've got the Q function getting the I function is really not that bad um, so we'll take a look at that too. Now more importantly than anything else is understanding physically what's happening here and being able to describe it in sketching a graph and then the mathematical side of things is just the cherry on top of your understanding. And so we have a capacitor and a resistor here. This capacitor was previously um, charged and it was charged, it had a voltage of the EMF of the battery at the time that then the battery was disconnected and now the current it's going to start with some amount of charge on, on the plate and that plate because there's a potential difference across the plates there will be a current and once that's reached zero then there is no more current to get. So when we looked at the charge versus time graph for the discharging we saw something that looked like this. We start with an initial fixed value which we call Q0 and that in terms of the capacitance so thinking about our capacitor equation right is the amount of charge per volt so the initial charge is going to be equal to the capacitance times the EMF that it was charged up to and then we saw that this decreased catatonically to zero where eventually when time is infinity there's no more charge on the plates. Now we already established in our introduction to RC circuits that the I versus T graph is going to look pretty much the same, yeah, obviously different values, but exactly the same shape. And we know that the initial current, thinking about this as a ohmic resistor, we know that it should follow this form that the potential drop across the resistor is equal to I times R because the potential drop the initial one is the EMF I can write it in this way okay so I could be written as EMF over R so I know that this I initial value is the same thing as EMF over R okay so just some kind of overview of where we've got to to this point Adding the mathematics to match this graph, we see that we have the function Q of T is equal to Q naught times E to the negative T over RC. Okay, another version of that would be just to substitute this in here. So I have Q of T is equal to capacitance times EMF times E to the negative T over RC. Now, it's not a huge stretch to get from one of these two functions over to a function for current, right? Because we know that I of T is equal to dQ dT. That's a definition of current. So really what I'm saying is I need to take the derivative of this function and then I'll have the current function. Now it comes in the general form if we have our function in the form y equals e to the ax, the derivative dy with respect to x is going to be equal to a times e to the ax. Okay, so not really a horrible differentiation to do. Here we know a is equal to uh, 1 over rc. Okay, so when I do the derivative here, when I take the derivative, what I find is um, that I'm going to have, um, let me move this over just a little bit, I of T is equal to 1 over RC, that's the A out front here, times E to the negative T over RC. 
Now, I also left out, sorry, this C times EMF, okay, because that was already a coefficient in the equation. Now, what I see is that the capacitance factors out, and so I'm left with something in the form here of I of T is equal to EMF over R, okay, times E to the negative T over R C. So I have this function that looks almost identical to this, and then I can substitute in I naught instead of E EMF over R. So I'll go ahead and do that, but they're both equivalent. I of T is equal to I naught times E to the negative T over R C. So there we go. We have a function for current and we have our functions here for charge and we see that they're really in the same form. I have some initial value that is my intercept. I then have the function e to the negative uh, t, t and then I have the coefficient 1 over rc. And what we're going to look at in a few videos down the line is the significance of this rc product constant which is known as the time constant but more on that later. In the next video what I want to look at is now the charging portion the part we avoided from the very beginning charging the capacitor and what this would look like for the Q versus T and then it's not such a big stretch when you actually have to take the derivative of that function. So in the next video we'll take a look at setting up the differential equation and solving it for charge versus time for the charging RC circuit rather than discharging.